Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Lift your hands everywhere and bless the name of the Lord. Thank him for his wonder walking power in our midst. Thank him for the miracles, the signs, the wonders. Thank him for bringing performance to his word. A grateful person is giving thanks tonight. Now ask him to use you greatly and to prepare you for what he desires to use you for even tonight. Pray that he will use you greatly, that you will not just celebrate miracles and testimonies, but that you will become that vessel that he can use. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all. as a tool for your glory. Someone who is passionately in love with Jesus is praying. Take a minute to cry this from the depth of your heart. Shabelada kaparada balakata bras. Kebrande kebaratus yate. Take everything, all that you have given me, let it be used for your glory. Eba shate brande skalibra te maratus ebreski etash. Are you still praying? All I have is yours. All I have is yours. That all. Everything that we have, Father, we bless 
you and we decree and declare that it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you this. When you make up your mind to invest in his presence, there's no limit to what your life can become. There are things that only his presence can bring. His presence is beyond brain work. His presence is beyond the wisdom of men. Are we together now? So when we take our time to soak in his presence like this, it is part of your becoming. It is part of the training process. It's not just whiling away time before the word comes. It is how it happens. That sometimes we just allow you in his presence and something happens to you as you behold him. Something happens as you allow that glory. You cannot give definition to what is happening to your spirit man. But one thing for sure is like a hen resting over the eggs. You will think the hen is just staying there, but something is happening. It is not the hen changing. It is the egg that is changing. Are we together now? You would think because the hen is resting, the rest does not have an effect on the hen. She's the mother nurturing the egg. And it's amazing that she does not need to crack the egg to know what is happening. Right from there, the hen knows that something is happening. This is what is happening to you. Frail you, weak you, ignorant you, but honest you, opened you, yielded you. This is what is happening to you now. I'll stand with hearts hard and head abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. his property in experience then he will walk wonders out of your life he will cause you to be a living wonder not a dead person who is being spoken about by those who are alive that in your lifetime you will see the glory of God manifested through your life a sign and a wonder men will look for various names to call you as a description of the wonder working power of God some will call you ministers of our God some will call you the great power of God <laughs> others will call you an expression of God's wisdom do you believe this this is what is happening to you remember that you are staying something is happening to you in that glory a man of God is being made in that glory an intercessor is being made in that glory are we together? A battle axe is being made in that glory. There is a sharpening. There is a chiseling. There is a making. There is a breaking. There is a remolding. Doesn't matter if it's pleasant or unpleasant. It works together for your making. I'd like you to pray in one minute tonight. Everything you have prepared for me, oh God, I open up my spirit to receive. Everything. That includes those who are following from across the globe. Pray that prayer from your heart. All that you have prepared for me. All that you have prepared for me, I open up my heart to receive.
upon us tonight every time we gather in your presence it is because we trust you we trust what you're doing in our lives we trust what we are becoming we trust that you are furnishing us in righteousness and helping us to become accurate portraits you're causing us to step into the graces that have been preordained for us you're causing us to access the wisdom of the Spirit. And tonight we have come again. We have come to listen. Speak, O oh God. We have come to learn. Teach us. We have come to be made. Build us. We have come to be empowered. Energize our spirits and our minds. And I pray in the name of Jesus that at the end of tonight's service, it will be evidence that we encountered the God of heaven. We vow to give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. It's good to have everyone in the presence of God tonight. And we thank God for the mighty testimonies. You know, I really get humbled when I hear people come to the altar and just testify. And I watch for myself the wonder-walking power of God's word. The things that he can do when men believe him. The things that he can do when men believe him. The things that he can do when men decide to trust him. And sometimes to trust him against all odds. To trust him in spite of. Let me speak a word of hope over someone. Listen. The Bible says, surely there is an end. It doesn't matter what you have gone through. It doesn't matter how long. I can assure you, use the testimonies tonight and prophesy to yourself that the Bible says, surely. The word surely means certainly. Certainly there is an end. If you ever saw the beginning of that challenge, be rest assured you will see the end. And you will see the end sooner than you planned. The end means the end of barrenness. The end means the end of shame. The end means the end of begging and borrowing and reproach of any and all sorts. The Bible leaves us with a scripture of comfort. It says, surely there is an end. Let the mockers mock while you trust. Let the naysayers commend while you trust. Your assignment is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Refuse to look at the winds and the waves. They will laugh while you are walking on water. But when you finally arrive, they will say, truly, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. When you are making progress with your life, you must know that focus is of essence. Nobody runs to win and is looking left and right. It doesn't matter whether they are cheering you or laughing at you. It is distraction the moment you have a goal before you. Nobody runs the Olympic intending to win. And then he turns to see his family members waving and say, you are making it. No, he can hear and that's enough to motivate him. Or turning to see other people say, don't worry, you will lose the race. Uh -uh. Both the people who cheer and the people who mock, um, they, have, they have minimal effect once you are focused. But once you begin to turn to the left or the right, then you are already off course. Naturally, you will fail. Hallelujah. I think I've shared with you here a very interesting story of a gentleman who was climbing a very high altitude and the ladder from, if I recall, the ladder he was using was not very strong and while he was climbing, you know, people were down, others were, most of them were trying to tell him, get down. That ladder may most likely, you know, break and you will die. You will not finish that race. And when the person saw them, um, he kept smiling at them. He would look down, smile at them, and continued going up. The people were angry. They were trying to motion in various ways to say, Mr. Man, we're warning you, the higher you go, the more the assurance of your dying if you fall. And at the end, when he, you know, got to his height, his expected end, um, they got to investigate the man and they found out he was deaf. That was the reason why he got there. So while they were speaking, all that they were saying, 
everything they were saying was subject to his interpretation. He thought they were motivating him, you can make it. Whereas they were telling him you are going to die. His deafness was an advantage. Many of you, your unbecoming is that your ears are working well and not walking to the Spirit of God, walking because you want to hear everything and you've heard something that has become a virus to your progress. I'm praying tonight, everything you have received that has impeded your progress, deflated your passion, let it jump out as you hear the word tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. One thing I know for sure is that the end of this journey with you and God is glory and grace. The end of this journey with you and God is beauty and color. There's nothing the devil can do about it, provided he cannot distract your faith and focus. It is, it is for sure that you must become everything God preordained for you. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very quickly tonight, we're honored to have um, a number of pastors from House on the Rock. Let me just honor them, even though they come here every time. But we're house of honor. Let me start with Reverend Yusuf Akila, House on the Rock, just an honor to have you around tonight, sir. Thank you. Pastor Mike Ako, House on the Rock, Bauchi. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Pastor Sam Doguri, House on the Rock, Gombe. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. We're really honored to have you uh, worship with us tonight. We do not take your presence for granted in Jesus' name. Just a few uh, important announcements. First, to let our family in the East know that I'll be coming to Enugu uh, on Wednesday. So I'm in Enugu on Wednesday and um, gather everybody around Enugu and environs and I'll be sharing God's word, we'll be experiencing an outpouring of his spirit. I believe that someone's season has come in the name of Jesus. You can get all the details on our social media platform, House on the Rock, Enugu it is, and it's going to be a great time in the presence of God. So tell someone to tell someone to tell everyone that Jesus is ready to give all of us within the East a mighty encounter and um, to Jesus be all the glory. Amen. Second announcement um, our medical team will this year again be having um, the outreach so we partner with a few doctors from John Hopkins and then a few other places and last year we used the opportunity to do a training for medical practitioners not just in this house but generally we open doors and then we're able to do the IVF program this year, we're not going to do IVF again, but we'll do a medical outreach. And so our medical team will be doing a training. We'll bring in all these professionals and we'll be having a one-day training for doctors, pharmacists, lab scientists, just medics and paramedics. Um, so you want to be part of that, um, that training. At the end of the service, unfortunately, we're not going to allow for online booking. We need people who book physically to know they are here. I'm not sure that they have a space for more than 500 attendants for the training. Um, it's a specialized training. They are going to be bringing a lot of information. So for those of you who are here, medical doctors here in Koinonia, Koinonia Global, you are open to apply. After the service, you can go to the medical stand, and I'm sure they have a provision where you write your name, the relevant details, and they will get to you accordingly. And then for those who are outside of Abuja but are sure you will make it, I'm sure that room will also be given so that you pen down your name. Okay, so there's a QR code. You can scan that uh, and then make sure that we have. And please, if you do, make sure you'll be there because we make provisions for these people. So don't stop someone else from coming and then don't attend yourself. You're a medical doctor, you're a pharmacist. You know anything around medicine the practice make sure that um, but I think it's going to be a great one you will learn a lot and um, it will be an opportunity to grow network with strategic people transcontinentally and then build you know your network base your understanding and then 
the next day, I think that should be a Friday, the Saturday, whichever day that is, let me have the dates, exact dates. The Saturday will be an outreach, um, a medical outreach. We're going to be doing some outreach for several people, you know, drugs, treatments, and all of that. I promise that by next week, when they feed me with the exact details, I'll be up here again. It's, it's at the end of the month, this month, so we don't have a lot of time left, but I will make sure that the full details, uh, when I get all the details, I'll make sure that I announce it. But for now, we're interested in those who want to participate for the training. Please take advantage of it. I'm taking the time to announce now before the word, now that I have your attention, make sure after the service. And then for those who cannot make it, but you have people around, you can do well to let them know that this is what we're doing. As always, it's our contribution to strengthening people. I believe in building the whole man. It is our contribution. We're not just healing the sick physically, but we partner with our doctors to see that the medics are trained and then as many people are blessed and empowered. Are you happy about that? And so we thank God for the opportunity and the privilege to be able to do that again next week i'll come up with a more comprehensive announcement uh, on the exact date and all the logistics as it is needed for now we need to go straight to the word can you pray one more time father open my eyes i'm ready to learn i'm ready to receive ready to learn ready to receive From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord from the rising of the sun, right on till it's going down, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be exploring the wonders of consistent prayer. I want to show you something very powerful in the spirit. When we pray, when we pray we're considering a topic when we pray and i'll be showing you the wonders of consistent prayer what happens within a believer when you submit yourself consistently to strategic prayer as one of the tools that makes one of the tools that builds the believer luke chapter 18 please we'll read from verse 1 we we'll end at seven where our text is and then a few preambles and we go straight to the word i hope that we'll have the time to pray whilst i teach because god placed it as a strong burden in my heart and i'm praying that someone will find this key tonight and it will turn you into a sign and a wonder and he spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We're reading to verse 7. Our text for tonight is found in verse 7. Saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse 3. It says, And there was a widow in that city. This widow came unto him, the judge now, and said, Avenge me my adversary. Verse 4. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man yet because this widow troubled me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me verse 6 and the lord said hear what the unjust judge saith read verse 7 let's read together are you ready verse 7 one two go and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them. One more time. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? 
Amen and amen. One more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12. Let's read together. One to go. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. May that be your experience in Jesus' name. Now, let me start by saying every encounter in koinonia is a training a training for you to become a person of grace a person of understanding a person of stature and a person of power please pay attention now that every service it doesn't matter in what form or in what fashion it comes provided it is a koinonia service I want you to see it as an opportunity for training. The kind of training that makes you a believer with grace, a believer with understanding, a man or a woman of stature, and a man or a woman of power. Hallelujah. I have read out for you a list of the kind of believer you are becoming as you submit yourself to the teachings week in, week out. Your becoming is not random. It's important that you continually born within your mind and your spirit the kind of believer you are becoming. Are we together now? Every cook or every chef, whilst they are mixing all the ingredients, both simple and complicated, they know that they are mixing it towards a common goal. They have an end. Are we together? Yes, this is very important. I wrote something down here as an introduction and I want you to listen. Knowing God's desire and ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter. Just listen before you write. Knowing God's desire and his ordination for your life is like receiving an admission letter into a high institution of learning. It merely tells you what you can become, but an admission letter does not make you become. Are we together? If you receive an admission letter to study in a medical college or a law college, it is barely an invitation. It's giving you legitimate access to submit yourself to the processes that make you that lawyer in experience, that doctor in experience. Are we together? As profitable as holding an admission letter is, you cannot be called a doctor just because you have an admission letter. You cannot be called a lawyer. Nobody is ever called a lawyer because you have an admission letter into a law school or a doctor because you have an admission letter. So knowing God's desire for you, understanding, knowing his ordination for your life does not automatically mean you will become that which he preordained for you. It's like holding an admission letter. You have to submit yourself to the various practices, the various disciplines, the transformative processes that make you become inexperienced as per the field you were admitted in. Are we together? Now, generally speaking, I, I just decided to start with a checklist tonight. Most believers do not know that your becoming mighty in the spirit is predicated upon an exact body of spiritual knowledge. It is not every spiritual information that is necessary for your making, for your growth, for your becoming. But the bodies of truth required, if not found and if not understood and engaged, you will remain weak, you will remain stunted. Your Christian experience will be, I mean, a continual expression of frustration. There are a number of things every believer must know. I wrote down a few things here. And I want you to listen as you write, but use it as a checklist and find out which of these truths you do not know before we get into the teaching of the word proper tonight. Are we together now? My intent is to see by God's grace that you are thoroughly furnished. In fact, the Bible says it beautifully. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul was communicating his frustration to the church in Corinth. Give it to us, media, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren... I could not speak unto you as spiritual, he said, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2. He says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Isn't it amazing that Paul said, when I came to you, 
I came like a chef carrying both milk and meat. But when I discerned your state, it was a waste to feed you with meat. I had to make do with milk. It says, because you are not able to bear it then, neither are you able to bear it now. So time does not necessarily determine growth. He came one time and found out by assessing them spiritually that they were still babes. And he said, no, I have to make do with milk. That means every man of God has milk to feed and meat to feed. And you see, um, this is not a pastor's conference, but let me just use this to charge everyone in righteousness. You're a man of God here. Let me tell you the truth. How you get milk is different from how you get meat. Are we together now? Every mother here knows that it is very easy in most cases to get milk. You just need to express it is within you, even if it's from a cow or a human being, and you don't have to die to get milk. But every time you see meat, something died. Did you hear what I said? A woman can be gisting while expressing milk, laughing and all of that. But every time you see anyone holding meat, it is a testament that death has happened. So when you desire to serve God's people milk and meat, for milk, all you need to do is to find the source. It's a gift from God. Just the responsibility of expressing it and that's it. But for meat, every time you see meat, whether on your plate or on your fridge, it is a testament that something died. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. There is a relationship between death and sight. Death and revelation. Are we together now? Anyway, so back to our discussion. Paul was saying, when I came to you, I wanted to serve you with milk or with meat. And I found out you were still infants. And I had to make do with milk. That means every man of God comes with milk and meat. And the transition is dependent on one, your level of receptivity. But number two, how much you engage the milk. When they see the level and the extent of, of development, they are motivated to now transit you into meat. And then even among meat, there are all kinds of meat. Are we together now? Yeah. There's what the Bible calls strong meat. Strong meat. Strong meat. Hallelujah. There are a few things every believer must know. Number one, every believer must understand the art of prayer. You have to be trained to understand the art of prayer. We'll speak a bit about that tonight. Number two, every believer needs to understand how to access light from scripture. If you do not know and you do not submit to training to know how to access light from scripture, how to access light from scripture is different from reading the Bible. You can read the Bible, you can even study the Bible and not know how to derive profit from scripture. Are we together now? It's the same thing like having coconut and knowing how to mine the oil out of the coconut. Someone can have a lot of coconut at the back of your house and never be able to produce coconut oil or groundnut, groundnut oil or olive oil, any kind of thing. There is a technology just because you have the raw material there does not mean you have the intelligence. Are we learning now? Many people have scripture but they do not know how to draw forth the riches, the profit from the word. And this happens through training. Are we learning now? Number three, every believer must be trained on how to tame the flesh. Every believer, you must be trained on how to tame the flesh. You must be taught the dynamics of living above the flesh as a way of thinking, as a way of living, as a way of acting. Your Christian experience will be stunted in, in many, many, many dimensions if you do not know how to tame the flesh. Number four, every believer must understand the structure of God's kingdom, the way God built his kingdom. I'm just doing a checklist for your spiritual growth. This is koinonia. 
the structure of the kingdom. How did God build the kingdom to function? It's important that you know this. The Bible talks about Christ being the chief cornerstone. Then it talks about the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Are we together? Then the Bible now calls every believer living stones. Living stones that make up that structure. So everyone is a part of that building. But there is, there is an architecture that you must understand. And if you violate that ordinance, you will pay for it. For instance... If you turn any apostle and any pro prophet into the cornerstone of your life, you have distorted the architecture. Are you seeing that now? No matter how great any man of God is, no matter how great any individual is, at the point where you turn a man of God to now become your chief cornerstone, it doesn't matter what kind of impact they've made in your life, you've distorted it. Number two, if you fail to regard the foundations that God has put, there are consequences also. You see how it is? Most believers do not understand the structure of the kingdom. What else do you need to learn? You must be trained as a believer to know how to access help. Help from the realm of the spirit and help within the world of men. If you don't know how to access help, you will suffer. Your life will be mara. It will be like bitter waters. Many believers do not know how to access help. There is a way people access help. And there is a way, there is an approach to life that if and when you follow, help will be far from you. Are we together? What else do you need to learn as a believer? All believers need to be trained in the art of warfare spiritual warfare war betides the believer whether by deception or sincere ignorance who does not understand the dynamics of spiritual warfare you may not live to survive and walk in victory especially within this end time warfare every believer needs to understand kingdom service every believer needs to understand kingdom service the Bible says we have been bought with a price. It says, therefore, glorify the Lord God with your body, which is the Lord's kingdom service. Every believer needs to learn the principles that make you relevant in today's world. The principles that make you relevant in today's world, not only to God, but to men. There are many believers who have not been so trained, unfortunately, they have not learned the principles that make them spiritual and yet relevant within the context of their world without compromise. Jesus said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. When it has to do with your origin, you are alienated from this system. But in terms of your impact, you are in the world. In other words, you cannot ignore the happenings that are around your world. Are we together? Every believer must be taught wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. Wholesome spirituality. This captures a general knowledge of the Bible. Wholesome spirituality. A general knowledge of the Bible. While you may not know everything about the Bible, it is a shame and I tell you it, it is... It is quite honestly embarrassing for any believer who has attended church consistently for one year, two years, three years under structured mentorship to not be able to intelligently articulate the Bible, even if it's in summary. Are we together? You must have a general fair enough knowledge of the Bible. For instance, the subdivisions of the Bible, it is, it is not... It is not anything burdensome for an average believer to be enlightened enough to know that the Bible is fragmented into various dimensions. There is the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch. Are we together now? Yes, Genesis down to Deuteronomy. There are the poetic books. There are the prophetic books. Are we together now? Yes. And then we have the Gospels. We have the book of Acts. We have the epistles. We have revelations. At least... To have that fair enough knowledge. There are major stories in the Bible. Anyone who has been reading his Bible and loved Jesus, at least you should be accustomed to. You can imagine, we're talking about, say, um, 
the parable of the ten virgins and someone who has been in church for at least three to five years is wondering you mean there's such a thing in the bible it means that person you may not be demonized but you are lazy lazy you should have found it somewhere are we together there are certain scriptures that your spirit you cannot say i forgot no are we together now it's like a doctor who has never heard of a syringe a doctor who looks at a stethoscope and says what is this I understand there may be certain machines you've not seen at least the ones that were invented recently but you cannot say the tools how were you trained then are we together now wholesome spirituality you must have a general appreciation of Bible knowledge number two I'm still explaining wholesome spirituality I just felt like dwelling a bit there the knowledge of God the knowledge of God make reference to my teaching knowing God accurately knowing God accurately you may want to listen to it to help this dimension of knowledge you want to be wholesome spiritually you must press to know God I teach there that the knowledge of God is three-dimensional the knowledge of his character the knowledge of his ways the knowledge of his power hallelujah then you must understand the plan of salvation you are not spiritual I don't care what you know if you do not understand the plan of salvation if you cannot intelligently articulate the plan of salvation one you are not matured number two your spiritual knowledge is standing on shaky ground because it is the entire scope of the plan of salvation that culminates to the person Jesus who is the epicenter of the believers work most Christians can tell you all kinds of things they attempt to chew um, strong meat and you check they don't have teeth strong meat is for those who have teeth well developed not milk teeth there's what we call milk teeth am I right on that milk teeth milk teeth is not for you know strong meat the plan of salvation the average believer who is a churchgoer cannot explain to you the entire plan of salvation in the most simple way not 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 any elaborate theological explanation but very in a very basic way because they have not read it and unfortunately for many they have not found themselves in Christian circles where that subject has even been discussed most believers can sadly talk about breakthrough they can talk about lifting they can talk about giving payment of vows and these things are not wrong but ask the average believer to give you intelligently a discourse on the plan of salvation you'll be very disappointed and that even includes all spiritual leaders hallelujah wholesome spirituality demands that you know who the believer in Christ is that is the next aspect of wholesome spirituality I hope I've not lost you I'm just giving a very a very necessary preamble the believer in Christ who is he who is she when you say someone has now become a believer in Christ what is the implication of that statement in the days of men like Papa Hagin it was a shame it was almost embarrassing it was it was like a taboo for you to be around the word of faith circle and you could not describe articulately you didn't have to be a pastor there are things you see when you are in certain spiritual circles you may not know everything but there are things that are most surely believed Luke chapter 1 verse 1 the things that are most surely believed among the brethren there are certain bodies of knowledge that those who are genuinely connected to that spiritual stream you cannot be ignorant of no it's like being for instance a member of say living faith and you have been there for 10 years and they ask you what is faith he said me too look let me tell you I'm really just a no shower as you see me like this I don't like trouble what have you been learning are we together or with all due respect you're a member of mountain of fire and they ask you tell us something about prayer you say my brother I just pray that's it I just pray that's all I know no you must stand in defense the things that are most surely believed among us who is learning very important you must learn about the Holy Spirit 
Nobody becomes spiritual truly if you have not been elaborately and extensively taught about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the principal sponsor of true spirituality. And so if you don't know the Holy Spirit, we have a right to doubt how you became spiritual. Are we together now? And if the Holy Spirit is not there to journey with you, your, your appetite to becoming spiritual is at risk because you are going to encounter familiar spirits. There are other testy spirits that are, that they are determined to be tour guides for you. And my goodness, they will take you to chambers in the spirit and mislead you indefinitely. And you see, the thing about conviction is that even if you are wrong, you will die believing you are wrong because it was an experience you saw. You went there. You went out of your body. Nobody can say you didn't go there. It is only when we examine what you saw from the lens of scripture that we now see that truly you traveled, but where you went to is where you shouldn't have gone to. Are we together? If I come out of my body now and I have some kind of spiritual experience, uh, you can't say it was not real. I was there. I saw it. I saw this and saw that. It is only when we compare your encounters with the authority of scripture. That's when you say, ah, truly I went to, but I'm supposed to pray that I never go there again. Because the things that I saw, the things that I submitted my thing, myself to, and the result that followed my life after I came back. Everything that comes from God has life. One of the ways you test everything spiritual is its ability to give life. Revelation, its ability to give life. Anointing, its ability to give life. One of the ways you test corruption in the spirit is the presence of death. Not the authenticity, not the eloquence, not the intelligence. Are we together now? So if you draw power from Satan, even if what you are teaching is true, people will be dying as they are listening to it. Strangely. They will listen to what should give life. But because the, the Holy Spirit is not the one behind it, what they are hearing is not a lie, but they will still die. One of the ways you test spiritual things is by the life-giving dimension in it. I am come that ye may have life. If a word comes from God, what does it give? If the anointing comes from God, what does it give? If prosperity comes from God, what does it give? You see that now? So you test your experiences by the richness of the life of God that is derived out of it. All the dreams you've been having, show me the life. How did it make you become like Christ? How did it make you conform to the image of Christ? Are we together? I kept receiving impartation every time. With all due respect, impartation doesn't matter from who. If that impartation is turning you to something else and you cannot find life, even if the person doing the impartation is innocent, we must trace where the oil is coming from. By oil, I don't mean olive oil. I mean, are we together? Most believers, because they have not been trained, they do not know how to test what they are receiving. They do not know how to test experiences. Every time angels appeared before men, the first thing they said was, fear not. That means the angelic should not leave you in fear and confusion. Gabriel said, I am come to give you understanding. So if you tell me you have been encountering angels and I see your life full of all kinds of confusion in every area, then I know that this angel you have been meeting is misleading you. Because when Zechariah doubted Gabriel, he felt insulted. He said, I am Gabriel that comes, that stands in the presence of the Lord. Are we learning now? I'm just doing this, 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 this checklist to be able to help you because many believers, unfortunately, many believers, they want to be mighty in the spirit, but they have not attained onto that state of maturity. And the desire to be mature does not produce maturity. The desire to be mature pushes you closer to the corridors of wisdom. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. So desire takes you to the realm of wisdom. And when you encounter wisdom, then with wisdom comes growth. Because it is through wisdom, a house, a life, a destiny is built. Are we learning now? 
very very important wholesome spirituality you must know how to engage all of this i'm saying this so that you can check yourself beloved people look at me refuse to be stunted refuse to be a believer that does not bring justification to the spiritual investments that god is making on you if you've been in koinonia for one year two years or perhaps you have followed sequentially all the teachings that have come i expect that you should have attained onto a state you should be able to at least define a few things one of which i'm going to be teaching on again are we together now your value for the word your passion for spiritual things i should see certain evidences in your life that justify your time now most believers use inaccurate parameters to measure growth usually in our world and especially is because it is the most charismatic we want to use evidences of prosperity and miracles those are usually the two evidences we use and we peg them as the pillars of spirituality unfortunately it's not so there is a place for prosperity so if I came for koinonia poor dejected and in one year suddenly I became a multi-millionaire great house great car that is wonderful but chances are excellent if you compare my before and now or the latter part of me you can conclude that this man has really become spiritual it's not necessarily so the dynamics of spirituality is not like that even though spirituality has streams and one of the expressions is a prosperous life are we together yes spirituality has streams prosperity is not spirituality but spirituality can have an expression that causes you to prosper the miraculous itself is not spirituality are we together now the fish that brought coin was not necessarily spiritual it just obeyed an instruction and brought coins so there are many believers for instance who have not made up their minds to be spiritual and we pursue either the miraculous for those who are interested in ministry and then for those who want you know money and a good life and nothing is wrong with that necessarily but we pursue those things and we conclude that provided i have money and provided promotion has come and is coming i must be spiritual i'm telling you that it may not be accurate there are some of the most prosperous people around who are not spiritual at all. When you weigh them in the spirit, they are as light as a feather, even though they have money. So when we talk about weight in the spirit, we have to use superior parameters. This is life eternal, John 17, 3, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Are we together? When the Bible talks of bearing fruit, he's not just talking of results alone there are fruits unto righteousness a transformed life intimacy with god are we together before other parameters it's important that we learn this now i did this checklist for you so that you will look carefully what aspect of my life have i ignored for some of you you have learned nothing about prayer perhaps some of you are just coming you are just getting connected to this vision you're most welcome, but it's important for you to listen and learn. Some of you do not know how to derive profit from scripture. You've not learned that. You were not mentored to understand that. Some of you do not know anything about the Holy Spirit, aside from the fact that you think he's a ghost. There's a lot more to learn. Huh. Are we together? So let's deal with our subject for tonight. I'm praying for you that every area of deficiency in your life, May the Holy Ghost lead you to a system that covers up everything in the name of Jesus Christ. That within the shortest time possible, these areas of gaps in the spirit that can affect you in ministry, that can affect you in business, may the spirit of grace come through for you. That you will be so enlightened in the name of Jesus Christ. See, the business of scripture, when we seek to study scripture, what we seek is understanding what we seek in is understanding what we seek is understanding because we rise upon the strength of the truths not just that you know that you understand and i'm praying tonight may the lord quicken us in jesus name we pray
Say amen. amen. When we pray. There is power in prayer. Prayer is one of the apostolic models that were left with the church. In Acts chapter 2 from verse 42, the Bible tells us the major spiritual activities that happened within the early church, Acts 2.42. It says they continued steadfastly. Take note of these two words, continued and steadfastly. The word steadfastly means diligently, favorable or otherwise. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. So prayer was a major part of the activities that turned ordinary believers to apostles. Right from Genesis to Revelation, we see accounts of saints praying, patriarchs praying, unbelievers praying. Are we together? The Bible is full of prayer. Prayer in its various ramifications, in various dimensions. The prophets of Baal, they prayed to Baal, asking him for help. Elijah prayed. Abraham prayed. Moses prayed. When Jesus walked upon the earth, Jesus prayed. The Bible would tell us every once and again that he departed in Mark chapter 1 from verse 36, 37, 38. That he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Verse, that should be um, verse 34, 35. Go back, 34 from 34 down. The Bible says, and in the morning rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Not that he slept. He prayed. Are we together? He taught the disciples to pray because they themselves requested that he should teach them to pray. They came to him according to Luke's synoptic account. They said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus began to teach them on prayer. It was Jesus himself who said a lot of things about prayer. So he spoke about prayer. It was a major training model as he was building the disciples to become apostles. He asked them to tarry with him when he went to Gethsemane. That they tarried with him for just an hour. They didn't even have the capacity to pray. The Bible tells us Jesus prayed repeating the same words three times. And sweat came like drops of blood. He prayed. He prayed for people while he prayed for himself. Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. It was Jesus that gave several stories and several parables relating to prayer. One is in Luke 18 where we read earlier on. And Jesus spoke about two men who went to pray. One who went arrogantly talking about his givings and the works of the flesh. And the other one went, he bowed himself and he was crying for mercy. Are we together now? So prayer is a subject that every religion in fact, to be quite honest, I do not know any religion, any practice whatsoever. Provided there is spirituality connected to that religious practice, there is some form of prayer, some form of activity that seeks to connect men to the divine, whether demonically or, you know, our connection with Jesus Christ as we know. So prayer is an essential part of every believer's life. I want you to listen very carefully. Jesus took time to pray. We see that Jesus won not just because he was the son of God. He won not just because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He won not just because he had the word. But the Bible is very clear as to the fact that prayer played a vital role in his victory. A vital role in his victory. When the disciples came, in fact, it was at the place of prayer that the Holy Ghost came upon them. Are we together? It says to tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. The Bible says they gathered together in one accord, Acts chapter 2. And then the Holy Ghost came and began his dispensation through the saints. Prayer was an essential part of the early church. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. When they beckoned on the apostles to come and deal with the matters of welfare. They said, set among yourself people full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom that we will serve to attend over this business. And he says, as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. They didn't say we'll give ourselves to prayer. 
the key is continually the consistency to prayer all through scripture we are admonished to pray mark eleven twenty four. verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray it is in the place of prayer that you can believe that you receive and then you eventually have it are we together first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible speaking through the apostle to the church in thessalonica he says to pray without season say that after me pray without season one more time pray without season are we together yes he says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation or for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of christ jesus Apostle James further encourage us to pray. James chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Let that man who is afflicted pray. Let that man who is afflicted pray. Let him not just think. Let him not just assume. Let him pray. It means that prayer is a vital component. Please listen very carefully. You have to listen to this to understand what I'm teaching you tonight. Prayer is not an option for believers. It is poor mentorship that has made prayer look like an elective course, if I would use that expression for believers, where you have to choose. So you hear people say things like, I'm not really the prayer type, but I go to church. But the prayer is, is not really, we, we are not really the prayer type. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. Prayerlessness has been responsible for the bankruptcy of efficiency in the life of many believers prayerlessness has taunted many moves of god personally and territorially there are many things that god desired those 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 desires of god were even captured by the prophetic but they never happened because prayer was the missing ingredient between prophecy and its manifestation whether for your life your family your city territories Many, many things God said have refused to come to pass because people have not learned the role of prayer in birthing the program of God, in birthing the purposes of God, and in evolving until they become powerful people. There are many ways to detect prayerlessness. One of it is to look for where powerlessness is. You see that now. When you find powerlessness, there usually is the diagnosis of prayerlessness or inconsistent prayer. There are wonders that are embedded in this mystery that Jesus left with the church, the mystery of prayer. A few people have left it to men of God the apostolic and prophetic and intercessory community. So we have those who have prayer groups, prayer houses, prayer ministries, and usually we fold our hands and wish them well. And every time we are plagued with trouble, the next thing we scan through our phones, who really prays? And you say, ah, there's this brother. That man, he can pray. And you say, please, I'm in trouble. Send. And then sometimes we add a small seed to it. And then we expect that everything will be done and it is unfortunate how many of us have not tapped into the riches there are men of god today who may never be able to birth god's prophetic program for their lives not because god has not desired so but they have not understood the role that prayer has to play in destiny actualization who is learning tonight for some of you you came to church to be taught that the real reason why your situation has not changed is because you have not prayed you have always desired to pray you have hoped that you have that you will pray occasionally when the situation pinches you you just take one day of fire brigade emergency approach but you have not given your destiny consistent prayer are we together now a woman can be pregnant with all due respect two months pregnancy is not the same as an assurance of having a baby are we together now you heard what our dear sister you know the sad testimony but we thank god for the end of it consistency if a woman carries a baby for three months and she says i'm really tired unfortunately 
she's going to lose that baby she was pregnant there was a real baby there but she could not stay through there i sense in my heart that there are many of you god is telling you that if you remain the way you are and you remain prayerless you will literally one day watch your bishopric being given to another because god is a patient god but he cannot allow the destiny of another person to be punished because of your refusal to become there is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits god's program did you hear what i said there is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits god's program and once you are out of that calendar god loves you but he cannot wait indefinitely again because your refusing to emerge will now begin to cause pain and setback for another person's destiny god is going to have to trust someone who has the diligence the zeal and is willing to pay the price in righteousness to become i have taught you here that there are many people today carrying their own assignments and other prophetic assignments that was not part of their initial script because God found them so faithful, they had enlarged their capacity. He felt safe to add certain mandates to them. So it is possible a man can start with God and that what that man is currently doing was never part of the original script. But those that were supposed to execute that part of the assignment as an act of their will, they did not engage in the many spiritual activities that produce power, stature, wisdom and grace. And they continue to delay God's program. And you will have to make do with an alternative. I'm praying for you. May God never raise an alternative because of your prayerlessness. May God never have to give someone else your assignment because you have indefinitely delayed his program. May God not have to raise help for your family from outside because all those who had the mandate to clear the powers of darkness and bring liberty to the family, they, they, they are at a loss as to what their prophetic role is. You will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Behind every man of stature in the spirit you see in the body of Christ, and this is not just limited to preachers, even though mostly preachers behind every man and every woman of God genuinely anointed genuinely graced that you see God trusting them today with mandates over nations and territories is a rich and healthy consistent many years old prayer life did you hear what I said many years old prayer life I submit to you and biology teaches us a 10 year old child and a two year old child are all alive they are all children but they are not the same a 13 year old child is called a teenager a one year old child is called a baby there is a difference the difference is in capacity when that 13 year old child becomes 18 years consistently growing you have an 18 year old child you have a 13 year old child you have a one year old child they are all children in some way but you see the difference is that one can be trusted with greater responsibilities one will have to be carried indefinitely one is still forming their beliefs and their understanding one is assumed now to be an adult how about a 50 year old man how about an 80 year old man who has lived effectively when consistency is in place time becomes an advantage the value of time is that it can help to sponsor consistency if you tell me you have been saved for 10 years uh 10 years does not make any meaning to me until i see the investment you made in that time if you tell me you have been praying consistently genuinely for 10 years then I step up my bar of expectation. If it is genuine prayer, I should see what it has produced in your life. You cannot tell me you have been praying for 10 years consistently. Either there is something wrong with the way you pray, how you were taught to pray. If you have prayed for that long and I cannot see the power component, the wisdom component, the fellowship component, the results that follow that life, I will have to teach you how to pray in a way that works. Are we together now? Holy, 
holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I don't know any ministry, any mighty ministry that did not start as a prayer ministry. Every ministry, it doesn't matter what you will later become, it starts as a prayer ministry. It doesn't matter what God is going to use you to do in the future. Are we together? The starting point, if you really want to do business with God, is prayer. In fact, it is better to be poor in Bible study and to be rich in prayer. There is something the Holy Ghost will do in you that will return you back to the place of the world. You can sit and open scripture in an empty way and not learn anything. But show me a people that can pray sincerely, the Holy Spirit being in their midst. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Follow the spiritual history of many powerful believers in the kingdom. You will find a storyline like this. One day, a burden was put upon my spirit. The hand of God came upon me. And by myself, I felt to separate myself somewhere and to start praying every day. If you don't hear that storyline, something is wrong. There must be, it doesn't matter how the story started. There must be a point where the Holy Spirit will place something on you. It's literally as if he hijacks you and takes you somewhere and you begin to become a slave to spiritual things. Not a slave in a negative way. You have submitted yourself to it. So every night, two hours under one tree. Shabakata balakata. Now you don't know what is happening to you. Tomorrow you go there again. Next week you go there again. I'll be teaching you what happens to your spirit man when you start. Let me tell you the truth. A day will come you will go as usual. And something will come upon your life. You will never recover from again. It's true. The church has not understood prayer properly. Now, there are people who pray, but what corrupts the potency of their prayer is their motif and their understanding. So in as much as they engage in spiritual activities, the profit point, the, by their ignorance, they have downplayed what prayer should deliver. But when prayer is done well, when prayer is done properly, Hallelujah. Listen, the way believers grow is very defined. You are not given liberty to choose how you grow. The parameters for the believer's growth is defined. And the tools that make for that wholesome growth are also defined. Are we together? When you tell me I want to grow spiritually, you won't say, well, I think I should choose what to do. No, there is what to do already. There are not many. What you need is not just to know them, but to engage them consistently. And one of it, ladies and gentlemen, is to explore the wonders of consistent prayer. Let me tell you something I have learned about prayer. The first assignment of prayer is not to deliver results. You will be disappointed many times if what leads you to consistent prayer is a problem you want to solve. Mm -mm. God can answer a prayer request somewhere in church, but when you submit yourself to prayer, the first thing that happens is not results. The first thing that happens is death. Are we together now? That prayer begins to do something within you, and God found something in men that he uses. The moment God sees that the delay in answer is keeping you prayerful, he will prolong it intentionally. That is the only way he can trap you. I know you won't believe what I'm saying, but it is true. Listen, look at me, look at me. Let me teach you this. <laughs> Let me teach you something about God. You see, Ba, God does not reason like men. Are we together now? Everything in the economy of God is with respect to his will and his program. And if God sees that there is a situation in your life, he's not hurting you. Anything that can help you become is a tool he can use. 
So there are many of you here, your convenience led to your prayerlessness. And when God found you in a situation that trapped you, that trap was producing hunger, that there was nothing else that could come, the lack of the rent, the lack of the situation, you never would have woken up to pray by yourself. You never would have been able to fast by yourself. But when you had one medical report that was not exactly the best, now it's not God that is causing that. And if it is God at the end of it is glory, but there are times that God prolongs a little because he has found profit. That's what it means to call light out of darkness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you know how God lures men in the kingdom? He gives you a taste of what can become your reality. Then he hides it back. If you don't know this about God, you have a very long journey to go. Listen to me. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Are we together now? Yeah. As a man of God, one day you will go for a meeting, you know, that you just went there sincerely hoping and God will do mighty things in that meeting. And you will go back and you honestly cannot tell what law you were engaged to have seen that kind of power. God withdraws it. He walked it through your hands and he withdrew it so that your hunger will drive you back to the secret to say, Lord, I have tasted of this. Don't deprive me of this joy again. And it will, it will cause you to stay until it becomes your experience. we together so there are many times it looks like God is not interested in answering prayers no he has found something within that condition that profits his program in your life are we together now yeah it's true this is what it means for death to walk in a man when you submit yourself to prayer if God cannot draw you to the place of prayer willingly and because of the kind of destiny you have, if he discerns the sincerity in your heart that is not rebellion, listen, once it is not rebellion stopping you, God himself will use any opportunity available to draw you to the place of prayer. Where God will leave you in peace is when he's aware that yours is not laziness, it's not weakness, it's an act of your will. You have chosen to reject efficiency, he will respect you. But once he finds hunger there, are we together now? So the day you hear that you've lost your job and you have five children to feed and there is absolutely nothing, God did not cause the loss of the job. But when you come to him and say, Lord, I will not leave you till you tell me where I'll feed my children. He says, finally, there is, an, there is a burning bush. Something has drawn you there. If it is the God of the Bible, I assure you, it's not the next day of that prayer you will get the answer. You will stay there. There is an advantage he has found. There is something you never would have had him say. You will not even believe it. There is a level of pride. There is a level of arrogance he needed to deal with. So many of the things that you think are evil are working good in you because they drew you to the place of prayer and God will not be in a hurry to answer them until the spirit of prayer and supplication rests upon you. He now knows that even if it's answered, you can't stop praying again. Then he can bring the answer. Who is learning tonight? You think you will go to pray for a three days fast all to get power that runs the remaining part of your life. God is not that stupid. Let me tell you the truth. Three days prayer and fasting cannot kill flesh and lust. You are joking. It will take many years of slow dealings by the spirit. Are we together now? God knows you are a politician until you repent. So when you get there, Father, I love you. You see all these souls you have given me. God says, they are my souls. So stay. Lord, I'm fasting because of this conference. The next level of my ministry depends on it. And God will keep quiet like he's not hearing you. 
while you pray and pray the truth is that you were fasting that three days fasting because you have seen that destiny helpers will be gathered there and he will see the sincerity of your heart but God is looking beyond that program he wants to make a sign and a wonder he may honor you for that program but he will lead you he will still leave that hunger in you until you get to a point where it's no longer about you no longer about a program no longer about an anointing you give yourself continually a level of death begins to walk there ladies and gentlemen i will run with you through a list that i prepared tonight what happens when men begin to give themselves consistently if you are not consistent in prayer you will not see any of these things i'm mentioning even though you are praying there are people who have been praying but they will not find anything among this list that i'm about to mention because there's no consistency Africa pray so many believers pray but we have not derived the profit and the power that comes from prayer because we have not been consistent I'm praying for you that the spirit of prayer and supplication tonight honestly will mantle someone that the grace to pray and stay till it works wonders in your life may it rest upon you in Jesus name When we pray, there are six things that happen. When we pray consistently, consistently, number one, the first thing that happens to a believer when you submit yourself to consistent prayer is that our spirits are quickened to discern. Our spirits are quickened to discern. The quickening of the spirit that leads to discernment is the first gift you receive when you are consistent. The quickening of the spirit that causes you to discern. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's hurry up. The Bible says be careful. The word careful there is talking about anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. Listen. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god what happens next verse 7 it says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding are you seeing that something has happened to you beyond the realm of understanding that peace will guard your heart and your minds do you know what it means it is a it is a dimension of discernment where the peace of god guards both your heart and your mind is like a system of regulation it tells you something it's a language in the spirit when the peace of God can guard your heart and guard your mind most people do not even know what this is about because they have not submitted themselves to prayer consistent prayer listen to me everyone listen to me you don't have to be an intercessor you just need to be a serious person with god and your destiny at the point you make up your mind in righteousness that i will submit myself to consistent prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer praying in the spirit praying in tongues consistently you access the quickening of the spirit what does that mean i have taught you many times in this house that the, the way we have senses papa hagen would teach it so beautifully that you have your sense of smell your sense of sight your hearing your skin for touching and feeling are we together your tongue for tasting we say there are five senses biologically you know in the realm of the spirit there are more than five senses now with all due respect fathers like papa hagen would teach that there are also five senses in the realm of the spirit i agree but there are many other impulses and i taught this many years ago that there are many other impulses that a man has within his spirit that does not have physical definitions are we together now there are various channels for perceiving things that do not have their physical parallels you cannot give it language and yet you know that you have perceived things in the spirit. Are we learning now? There is the hearing and hearing in the spirit too. There is seeing 
and seeing in the spirit too. There is feeling and feeling in the spirit too. But there are other channels for perception that are not defined. Biology does not give us definition. But they are, it's, it's like your body is connected to a lot of other higher mechanisms for perception. Let me tell you, if you pray consistently, you will be able to discern immediately. And, and, and I'm not talking of flesh and biases. You can know when God is in a thing and you can know when God is not in a thing. Your spirit has been quickened. You can shake somebody and not know why you are feeling the way you are feeling. The person is not bad. There is nothing evil because the physical realm only tastes and feels things that are current. Your spirit man can perceive tomorrow today. So you can see someone who is very nice today, but your spirit man is fighting 2026. 20, He's fighting trouble that is coming from that relationship today. You can't, there is, there is nothing exactly that should tell you why there is trouble. I mean, this business partner is a very nice person, but your spirit has already gone. It can perceive impulses beyond the current level. Let me tell you this. That is what it means for the peace of God to protect your heart and your mind. When you submit yourself to prayer and there is turbulence within your spirit, even when there is peace physically, keep praying. Keep praying. Are we together now? Spiritual realities are not like physical realities. And if you do not know how to discern, you will. There are people today, with all due respect, who have passed on, who should have no business dying. They did not train this faculty. Are we together? They entered a car, everything around them, the Holy Ghost was trying to use everything to tell them. But they could not perceive nor did they have the spiritual intelligence to take authority over the situation the quickening of the spirit the quickening of the spirit you can see someone have you met someone before and you just connected as if you've known yourself for five years it's because your spirits were prepared already it is only physically you don't know yourself but in the realm of the spirit there is something about destiny and when you saw it deep called on to deep that's how destiny connections happen let me tell you the truth if you want to wait till you know people physically you are carnal you will pay the price there's a way you can see someone and know I, I don't know what it is about this person one day after five years you will meet in France and say I saw you somewhere yes truly so you are the one who should help me Judas never said, Jesus, I will kill you one day. Jesus saw Judas. Can you imagine walking with someone every day, knowing that this is the person who will kill me tomorrow? He said, that which you do, do quickly. And he went and did it quickly. You see how foolish he was? They've already told you that which you would do, do quickly. And the, the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about money issues. I cannot tell you how many people have been saved because their capacity to discern had been quickened. There are people who have missed out on the prophetic program of God. God was going left and they went right. And they stood there wondering, God, where are you? God says, I'm on the other side of your discernment. You need to pray in this end time. There is a way that seemed right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The first thing that happens to you when you give yourself to prayer is you no more interpret life by what you hear, by what you see. Look up. Many people are defeated today because their principal channel for perceiving and interpreting life are their eyes, their ears, their brain. If my eye says it is good, my ear says it is good, I feel it is good, I will do it. That is a, that's a suicide mission. There are many good things that will land you in trouble. You need to develop other perceptions. Are we together? And it does not always have to be negative. Sometimes someone can come to your company and somebody will tell you, this guy is a thief. This guy is a nasty person. He's always causing trouble. But your spirit man receives him in a way you cannot explain. 
because your spirit has seen that there was a prophetic word mama gave on that boy and say even though you are stubborn because you helped me may god always use you that is the blessing god wants your company to receive so you can see the boy will come he's stubborn he's not listening but if you can discern and ask god why did you bring this child to this house as a house help one day god will tell you you see ba many things that god gives men does not come in packages that are beautiful it takes discernment are we together now yes it takes discernment somebody who may not necessarily be that loyal and faithful but one day the person will be a contributor to you at a point of desperation desperation I know people today who kept supposedly nobodies in their houses when they became sick when they became down do you know that some of those young ladies young guys were the people who stood with them if I made up their mind that even if madam would die even if Oga would die I would stand even when their own children ran away there was a little girl called the slave girl her mother gave her a name we don't know what her name is but she went to the house of Naaman you think that she went to that house on her own as part of the spoils of war no there was a relationship she had with the prophet and God kept her there because he saw the purity of Naaman's heart now it was up to Naaman to listen to the girl it takes discernment some of the answers to your prayer are in packages that you will never receive if you are working with your eyes you're working with your ears who is learning tonight you must trust God for grace to discern because for some of you the reason why you always fall easily is that enemies have found out that your weakness is laughter anybody that laughs with you even if it's a, a knife is on his forehead you say you are welcome to my house discernment mm. discernment not every kind of kiss is a sign of love huh there is a kiss that is a sign of love but there is a kiss that is a signal this is the person to die in this family this is a person to go down in this family i pray for you where you have entered trouble on your own because your spirit has not discerned from today may god sharpen your discernment may god sharpen your discernment hallelujah it was god's servant who said as they kept going from place to place looking for land for ministry they could not find anywhere but he got to a place and the holy ghost told him this is the place it was a forest same thing with rccg same thing with every there's nobody who went to their promised land and it looked like a promised land every promised land will look like a wilderness it is discernment that makes you to see the unseen are we together now for somebody the job you are about to quit god is saying stay there not because of the salary stay there because god has orchestrated that by december the helper you see that now you may have been treated bad in the place but stay there now for many people we are controlled by salary when the devil i'm not saying is wrong and i'm not being being uh, you know uh, on uh, what's the word now i i relate with the pain of people but i'm telling you why many b believers get into trouble is that they are governed by physical things when the devil wants to move you out of the place of destiny he flags more money for you and you can literally move 10 years backward because hundred thousand was added to your life the first thing that happens when we pray is that we are quickened by the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer to discern number two very quickly I want you to listen to this one what happens when we pray we receive the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives oh this is serious when we pray we receive in the place of prayer not the prophetic blueprint for our destiny the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives god can show you your end 
and you may never get there because you do not know and you do not have the blueprint of seasons now let me tell you this what you call destiny is a summation of many seasons in your life and if you do not know how to receive the prophetic blueprint per season you will miss out on prophetic moments let's look at a few scriptures first corinthians chapter 2 please 9 and 10 very quickly first corinthians 2 9 and 10 but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man listen the things which god had talk to me koinonia god had prepared he's prepared them already there are things realms dimensions he's prepared for them that love him verse 10 the bible says but god has to reveal what he has prepared just because it is prepared does not mean it will manifest in your life it is prepared but hidden prepared but shrouded are we together prepared but closed and sealed it is in the prayer the place of prayer that you afford the holy ghost the opportunity to reveal it unto you because it is only revealed by his spirit the spirit in the place of prayer begins to search all things even the deep things of god and those things the bible says have been ordained for our glory when we pray we receive the blueprint the prophetic blueprint for every season please look up you've heard my story i told you from the time god called me i already saw the vision of nations i already saw the visions of several people but how many of you know that i still would have failed in ministry even with that vision because when my time in zaria was over it was not part of the initial vision i saw where else i will go are you seeing it now you can have the big picture but every season demands you receiving a blueprint that guides you for that next level honestly when i knew i began to sense in my spirit by this impulse of discernment that in truth my season in zaria had come to an end but now whether it was abuja or it was jaws or it was america or uk because all of these impulses had been registered in my spirit that koinonia would find expression in all these places but which is which that one i did not know if god leads you one of the way you will know he's leading you is he will never show you everything no it is page after page don't think he will give you the book and say go mm -mm. you will have to refer to him again i've exhausted page five and he says prepare for page six and you will have to submit yourself again some of you started well but you are about aborting the next season because you made a blind assumption that just because page one to five has been executed well it means that the remaining will work well i began to pray every day sincerely investing in the place of prayer lord for the sake of your name let me not miss out on the next level where do you want i'm telling you if i had my way i'm not sure it's abuja would come no are we together now lovely place i love the place but maybe i would have gone somewhere else but in the place of prayer and you would think because god was sending me remember what i told you i used to wonder why it takes god a while to answer and let me tell you if you're a person of faith you need to balance your understanding of faith with this thing i just taught you if not you'll be frustrated it is not every time god gives immediate answers and it does not stop him from being god there is profit in process and when god finds that in the life of a believer he will withhold answers intentionally to produce capacity and produce power i remember praying and weeks turned to months and i was praying and one day as always i was praying my usual prayer and a vision was opened before me and i didn't hear anything all i saw was the map of abuja and i knew that was it i remember rejoicing i said finally some of you would have said god so it's finally is now why did you now waste my time when i'm already in the abuja always see what you have become before the answers came always see what you have become 
God is more interested in what you become than the answer you receive. Did you hear what I said? God is more interested in what you become than the answer. If God answered me after day one, maybe I would not have this kind of result to the glory of God. Do you know why? Because sometimes when answers come and your flesh is still alive, you will think it was a dexterity, your level of spirituality. There is a level of brokenness. There are times God does not answer till you make certain personal covenant resolutions with him. He will wait until the day you get angry and say, okay, God, I'm telling you, if you finally give me this money, I'm the one telling you as I obtain grace, then the answer comes. And so this is what you were waiting for. You would have told me. Telling you will not make you do it. The human being, eh, aside from the dealings of God, is, all, is also a master of deception, even to yourself. Until God prunes you, he cannot trust the things you say because you've said many things that you did not live up to it. You ask him to kill you. He knew you were playing. You would have died a long time ago. You were so emotional, you wanted the result. Oh God, I'm telling you, just give me a job. God said, pray, please, pray. I've already seen your heart. I've seen your heart. Give me a job. Even if it's there, and God said, no, I want to make you a multi-millionaire. But I have checked your family tree and I've seen the tendencies of pride and the tendencies of flesh. And because of the way enemies have insulted you, if I give you 10 million, 100 million in this state, you will first leave me and flog it on the face of those who did not. So let me kill that self. Yes, sir. Occasionally, you will shelve the prayer and try to act in the flesh. Then fail woefully and return back in repentance and say, God, I'm here. He says, I'm still waiting. Let's pray. But if it is me that will prosper you, something in you must die. And by the time you get to a point where one day you will read a scripture and say, God, I don't care again whether I prosper or I don't prosper. Whatever happens, I'm telling you that as for me and I will follow you for the rest of my life somebody suddenly calls you and says god spoke to me in january and you say in january and you are only obeying now my brother i suffered from january till october because of your disobedience as funny as what i'm saying is this is how it works <laughs> there is an invisible hand that has withheld many answers because the version of you now it will be a risk to your destiny for those answers to drop. Therefore, you pray to receive the blueprint. It was in the place of prayer God brought the vision of sound of revival. It was right now. I'm still praying and saying, Lord, how do you want it to be? Because I'm not going to assume that just because we did it the way we did it, uh -uh, we parted the Red Sea by the message of God. But how do you want it this time around? Do you want us to walk on water or do you want us to get a boat? If you stand before seven rivers, hear God for the seven rivers. It's the reason why the world struggles. They have one result today, they cannot produce another one tomorrow because of assumptions. Listen, your prophetic blueprint is sealed. It takes engaging in the place of prayer. And let me tell you this. Prayer reveals and prayer purifies what you saw. Prayer does not just reveal, but it purifies. There are many times you will see things, both the ones God showed you and the ones that came out of emotions. Are we together now? Getting up to execute what you saw will leave you in pain. Just because it came from the place of prayer does not mean it came from God. You have your will. You are still being transformed. Who is learning? There are many, many things that you would think is God that told you. Submit yourself to prayer. And you will be shocked you will have to tell god sorry because at the end of it you will find out that all that confidence of saying it was god is not god that's why you must be careful in the kingdom arrogance is dangerous there are many statements that you make and say i know what god told me and then later god says okay come my son honestly it's not me mm -mm. you were in pain this seed that you raised you felt in your spirit it was me but it was a mix of pain and rent 
and other issues that led to that thing it was not me at all and then if you are broken you can say god i'm sorry i'm sorry or you can say god no i know i had you and he said me that I, this is god i'm telling you i'm not the one who spoke you are still saying i'm the one who spoke okay remain here and many people remain stunted there prayer does not just reveal the blueprint for your destiny it purifies it because while God is speaking it comes through the lens of your mentality the lens of your mind and many other information can be added that did not come from the throne it is prayer that purifies it eventually you will see that ah God said do two programs the vision came so powerfully flesh added five more programs and God says reduce it reduce it the remaining five is not me mm -mm. it's not me it's, ah, god but based on what i'm seeing i'm already seeing myself mm -mm. it is not me and then eventually you will see his wisdom i hope you are learning tonight the blueprint only god knows how many things i've had to cancel in my jota that i would have been convinced that it was god when they came now i have grown it doesn't matter what i see or hear I write it and it becomes my place, my prayer point. I have to take it to the threshing floor. Are we together now? If God says, organize a program next week, I will write that vision. You ask the leaders. There are times you can see me come with a lot of energy and tell you, ah, guys, there's something good. And then you see me keep quiet. The leaders are already used to it. Once they see me keep quiet like that, they don't even bother saying, sir, you, you mentioned that we're going to Russia the other time. What happened? I'm not ashamed to cancel anything that I see that is not God. It's cheaper to say sorry than to be disgraced a thousand times in destiny because of pride. Are we together? See, when you walk like this, your activities will not be many, but your winning percentage will be so high. Almost everything you do produces extraordinary results extraordinary results there are people who will do 50 things before they win three they keep failing in everything then after 10 activities wasting money wasting time if you lead the people that way they will leave you alone because they've already mastered that something is wrong with your hearing let me tell you this if you want to be a leader that commands followership you are not god but you must learn how to hear god if you move people left and you say sorry i thought it was right they now go right they now go left they will love you but they stand back and say please let's leave this guy as he goes right and left he he loves god but it's clear that he doesn't know where he's going and people turn and look for direction i'm praying for you in the name of jesus i don't know what is next in the script of your destiny but by the power of the holy spirit my god will reveal it to you expressly the next script of your life let it be revealed for you and hear me where you have already assumed a blueprint that is not in your blueprint whether it came by flesh it came by emotions I pray from my heart for you may God give you the courage to cancel and shelve it now cancel and shelve it now in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain